What's up divas and devos? It's your girl and you guys already know what time it is. It's Real Talk Wednesday. So today I decided just to leave the background out of it. Um, that was just like not even a one time usage but I do use them occasionally. It's just like hell to kind of like figure out the settings on my camera. So you know I will use them from time to time but not always you know. I just thought I would try something different out. So first of all let's even begin this week. Um, you know how I've been, what I've been up to. I really haven't been up to much of anything, just, you know, working, videos, making wigs, working, getting ready for the holidays, cleaning my house, working. But I really think like this past weekend, meaning on Sunday, it started on Sunday. It must have been like the day for the trolls. Like, you know what I'm saying? The goon, the goon squad to come out, the trolls to come out from underneath their bridge. You know what I'm saying? shit like that like the more trolls i think like this week the trolls have really kind of like attached themselves to me i'm not really sure what's going on but i'm not really going to give them too much of my attention however it just started on sunday with my um makeup haul video you guys know i love getting free makeup everybody can get it if you do social media it's no big thing you know it's free but it's not really free you have to record a video edit it and upload it so you kind of like work for it so it's not really free anyway you know the first troll the very first goon goon squad leader troll whatever you want to call her did she come on my video basically just talking about how lucky I am other people got to work for their makeup um, ever since you got that YouTube play button you changed you went and got your teeth fixed you got um you speak proper now you're wearing light eyes. You've changed. I used to be laid back. Okay, so, um, so since I got the, the YouTube plaque, I decided to go get my teeth done. I'm the same motherfucking person. I've always spoke proper. I don't go around talking slang, but I don't speak the best proper English grammar. But I've spoken the same way I've spoken since I've been a kid. This is how I speak. I'm not really sure if this troll thought that because it was a makeup video, I was supposed to cuss up a storm. You know, this is a makeup video. There's nothing really related to cussing in a makeup video. I don't know if she wanted me to say, like, you know, I don't like this shit or whatever. It wasn't even related to the video, but I'm sorry that I got my teeth fixed. I should have just kept them raggedy as fuck. I'm sorry that I got a YouTube plaque. I mean, shit, I've been around long enough. This is my third fucking channel. I think I've worked for it over three channels ago, okay? So, um, it was long overdue. It's just like little shit like that. So, you, you, you getting mad over shit like, you know, that I got my teeth fixed and that I got a YouTube plaque. Like, who does shit like that? And then has the audacity to post a comment about it. And, you know, basically she just kind of like went down the line talking about how um, I've changed. I used to be laid back. That's why she subscribed to me. But I'm now I'm on my high horse and I'm just extra. Really, bitch? I'm motherfucking extra because I got my motherfucking teeth done? Shit. I thought teeth was a health issue. Not being motherfucking extra. All y'all bitches who got y'all teeth done, y'all is all fucking extra okay and then you know she just left it off at well i know if you block me that means you know it's the truth and i'm um bothered or and i'm bothered by it let me tell y'all something first of all i don't i'm not the one to go around on youtube fighting picking fights with people starting shit some of the comments that be left in my comment section i'll leave them or i'll delete them i don't have time for it but there's days when you know what bitch you're not about to sit here and disrespect me and talk foolish like what you just said was foolishness and i'm not about to sit here and allow you to disrespect me so you know of course i'm gonna come back and i had to say what i had to say basically i'm not the one bothered i worked for all of this hunty you know just saying what i had to say now shoot be gone with you you know i shoot her off you know because you're a troll dust my shoulders off and shoot you off did this fucking little troll bitch come back and say aren't you in your 40s you got kids and grandkids of your own why don't you go spend time with them instead of being on the internet arguing about you not being bothered Okay, so here's the thing. This is the part that gets to me. So you start some shit with me and you say whatever the fuck it is you want to say. But if I say something back, I'm wrong because I'm 40. Like, where, where does that fucking work? What world does that work in? So it's okay for you to say whatever the fuck you want to say, the dumb shit. But when I respond, I should just basically be ashamed of myself because I'm 40. Go spend time with my kids. 
bitch listen like I told her the only person that's bothered is her she's bothered by my presence okay that's what the fuck time it is and like once again I told you shoe be gone troll bye bye swat um, troll away now she didn't say anything else after that she was a subscriber of mine she would leave comments from here to there I'm not really sure what her issue was maybe she didn't take her medication I'm not really sure what it was but listen Sunday is the Lord's day to some people. Sunday is my day to relax. You're not about to come to me with the foolishness and fuckery and get mad because I got my goddamn teeth fixed or I speak proper. I guess I'm just supposed to be hood, right? And speak, um, I don't know, what, slang, ebonics, whatever, not to speak proper. I'm just not supposed to be speak proper. I've spoken the same as I've always spoken, but I guess I just speak proper, so I've changed. First of all, if somebody doesn't speak proper and then they finally learn how to speak proper it's called maturing however as growing up as a child I always spoke proper and in my household we speak proper yeah I may use a few cuss words here and there or maybe sometimes all the fucking time in the real talk video but I speak motherfucking proper English okay so I'm not really sure what that was all about and then I got contacts so I've wore these contacts and like a few videos bitch you act like I've been wearing them all my motherfucking life and I've always had my teeth done and always had that motherfucking play button behind me girl bye then yesterday Monday another troll comes on my page this was on Instagram she fucking commented on my picture my natural hair out no makeup but the contacts oh my god what happened to your eyes I was like oh my god they're contacts with a question mark what a dumbass question. Well, then what happened to your skin? This is her reply. I said, what? Are you trying to insult me? Did this fucking Shrek bitch come back and say, well, because you got all those marks on your face. Talking about my freckles. Okay, so they're freckles. So you got all those marks on your face and bags under your eyes. First of all, bitch, I never have bags under my eyes. Second of all, they're called freckles. Third of all, I know you ain't trying to be talking about somebody the way they look with your fucking upside down smiley face fucking brows that you call a brow on your face with no motherfucking neck looking like Shrek and Fiona's daughter looking like somebody's Uncle Freddy dressed in a badass wig and some cheap clothing talking about somebody's face. Of course, what did I do? I left that motherfucking comment, along with other people's comments, back to her. I left that. And yes, you know something? It's petty season for me, okay? And I went on a few of her pictures and said, ooh, where your motherfucking neck at? Ooh, what happened to your brows? Did the bitch block me? She blocked me. Fine, whatever. Now I'm in the grocery store. This is like 40 minutes later. Did this troll, this motherfucking Shrek troll, fucking DM me through Facebook and was like, fuck you, you old bitch hoe. So then I call her through the Facebook, you know? Oh, so you don't want to answer, but you want to let it go to the voicemail. You want to hear my shit and hurry up and block me. This is the shit that I don't like. When a bitch starts some shit with you, they never want to fucking continue it, okay? Like, don't start no shit and then block a motherfucker so you're gonna go on instagram and start some shit and then block me and then go on facebook and start some shit and then block me but the main thing here is why do fucking trolls or bitches always start some shit and then hurry up and block your ass so you don't say nothing back to them what type of chump kitty move shit is that like who the fuck does that that's some kid shit like be a woman about your shit if you want something to say to me then say that shit bitch don't fucking fucking block me you done started the shit now i went in on you and now you gonna block me like who the fuck does that but the, also the main factor is so you got this troll and you got this troll sunday troll and monday troll And after that, I done said what I had to say about both them fucking trolls, both these fucking bitches. The only thing that they can come back to me with was, you 40, you old, you old bitch hoe. First of all, I'm not a hoe. Second of all, I might be in my 40s, bitch, but I never look like it. You would never fucking know I was in my 40s unless I told you, okay? However, you're younger than me. You're supposed to be a Jehovah Witness because you have that on your Instagram page. However, you going around talking about people, how they look, calling them old bitches and hoes and fuck you. Wow. And then I got people on my Facebook page because, of course, I'm going to put you on blast after you done said some smart shit to me. Talking about she give Jehovah Witnesses a bad name because nobody 
nobody likes Jehovah's Witnesses as it is. Let me tell you something about that. First of all, I don't really like when they knock on my door. However, your faith and your belief is what you believe in. I'm not about to knock you down, but I just don't like anybody knocking on my door. However, there are some people that use religion to mask their real devilish ways and the true person they are. So just because they're a Jehovah Witness does not make them holier than thou and God does not make them saved or a saint. Okay, some people use religion to just to mask the demonic ways that they are. So please don't feel like all Jehovah Witnesses or angels are, are better than thou because some of them ain't just like christians and muslims and everybody the fuck else okay that's why i don't go around preaching any type of word of the lord or the good book because my belief is something totally different than a lot of people and i'm gonna be who the fuck i am all day but i bet you this much i'm not about to sit around and allow no trolls to talk shit to me now my father and my husband then told me you know what don't let them bitches get to you my dad was like you feel me my dad today his birthday you feel me yes daddy i feel you he was like there's nothing you can do to help that woman all the makeup and beauty tips you give her couldn't fucking help her this is what my dad is saying okay and so same thing with my husband don't stoop to the level but you know what there comes a time and a place when a person get real tired of fucking raggedy ass bitches always starting shit and then dropping fucking block lines like stop blocking me okay be a woman about your shit all right Trust and believe your IP address is real easy to get, bitch. Don't fucking come on none of my social media starting shit and then get mad when I fucking come back at your fucking ugly ass. That's the word and the lesson of today. So other than that, my week has been just fine. Um, just some trolls. Um, trying to see, has there anything? You know what? My life, I don't think, is really that exciting. It's an average life. You know, I work hard on what I do, whether it be YouTube, editing, making wigs, you know, I work hard. And I just, you know what, let me explain something to you guys. In that makeup video that I had posted on Sunday when the first troll approached me, at the end of the video, I was basically talking about, you know, these bracelets that I had gotten. And it was for someone that, um, one of my subscribers who sent me bracelets, he was just telling me, you know, it was for good energy. And I was explaining in the video how, you know, I really stay away from people that have a lot of negative energy and stuff because, or just negative vibes or just negative attitudes because, for one, I don't tolerate it. I don't have the tolerance for negativity. I don't have the tolerance for nasty attitudes. I just don't like to be bothered with it. I, I feel like because I'm in my 40s, um, I just don't have the time for it. I have been there and done that with all the foolishness and the, and the non-positive shit in my life. So it's like, okay, now is the time to just be mature. It's been that time for me a long time ago, but more or less, I just really try to stay away from it even more so now just because I think, you know what I'm saying, I came out here to Arizona to get away from bullshit and to just have a good life and just have a good structure for my children and just to be free of foolishness and nonsense. And I think that with me, I have let the, I have let a couple foolish things in the door in my home and I had to really hurry up and rectify that situation and get rid of that fucking devil and that foolishness so now that I'm back to being on my cool vibes and I don't really like people fucking up my feng shui and so I don't really go around being mean to anybody I don't like to argue with people I don't like to to be nasty and mean to people a lot of the times when there's negative comments I just delete them because for me I don't let it get to me but then there's a time and a place where it's like you know what I'm not gonna allow you to sit up here and just like bash me and say things that are not true like there's a time like I think a lot of people take me for granted or walk all over me or just feel like I'm pussy I don't really understand what it is because I'm, I'm just not com it's not that I'm not confrontational but the type of person I am I just steer away from trouble I just stay in my own lane and I do my own thing and I think a lot of people find that to be kind of like you know well I'm gonna say what I want to say to her because she's not gonna say nothing bad or you know I don't I don't understand and then when you do say something back to them you the one in the wrong or ain't you too old to be acting like that but bitch there is no age limit on flipping the fuck out on people like seriously there's not and ain't you too old to be immature talking about somebody change because they got their teeth fixed like I, i'm extra bitch let me tell you something i've always been extra okay extra motherfucking cute extra motherfucking smart extra motherfucking um snooty extra motherfucking non-filtered extra motherfucking potty mouth extra everything whatever you want me to be fucking extra i can fucking be there and i've been an extra nice person extra good friend and amongst that just extra 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 good person in general so all that extra shit miss me with that shit because i've never been extra i'm just 
April, low key April, and that's how I plan to be for the rest of my life. Proper English, speaking proper. Wow, that's that's some fucked up foolishness to say about somebody. But either way, here no there. I just want you guys to know I don't go around starting shit with people, and I'm pretty sure you guys know that I don't go around fighting people. I don't go around being mean to people. I don't like to call people names and tell them they ugly. Cause you know what? Even if you ugly to me, and maybe you ugly to everybody else too, I'm pretty sure somebody like you or somebody think you cute. I mean, you your mama probably do, or you know what I'm saying there's always somebody for somebody. But here's the thing: don't go. Around around picking fights with people and then back out the shit because that person then lashed back the fuck at you like so you thought you was gonna bully me but then I had to show you my true motherfucking colors like okay bitch I might be 40 but listen I've been around for 40 years bitch you don't want a piece of this you don't want any of this extraness okay like, you know what I'm saying? I just wish that people would stop it. Like, women are supposed to empower one another. That's what they all say. Women are supposed to stick together. Women are supposed to do this together. Yeah, that might be so fucking true, but there's a lot of catty ass bitches out there who call themselves women and want to have women empowerment. But don't do nothing but go around hating on bitches and talking shit. Now, I'd be the first one to tell you if I said something about you because I could care less. If I don't motherfucking like your ass and I done said something about you and you asked me, yes, I did. Okay, that's what I'm going to tell you. Yeah, and? Because what you going to fucking do? You going to fight me? Okay, we can fight. Whatever. You might beat me up. You might fucking not. Who knows? But I just hate when females go around and they always talking shit about somebody else. Like, stop it, okay? Improve on yourself. Get yourself together, boo. Improve on yourself and be happy. Stop worrying about what the next motherfucker is doing. I commend anybody. It ain't even that woman empowerment. It should just be human being, the people in general empowerment. Lift each other up instead of going around bashing people. Like, I could care less if your eyebrows is an upside down frown. That's if you want to be a motherfucking chola, then do that shit. I don't care. You the one that got to wear that shit. That's on you, okay? It is what it is. And if I want to get my fucking teeth fixed, then what the fuck do you care? That's on me, bitch. I want to get my fucking teeth fixed. But either way, you know what I'm saying? I just need y'all to know that, listen, it's not cool to go around bullying people. If you don't like somebody and you don't like what they're doing on social media, then go, go on and keep it moving. Don't think that you have the right or the audacity to get on here and talk shit and then when they respond back to your ass, catch an attitude. Like, we don't do that. Be grown about your shit. Be grown and motherfucking sexy about your shit. And if you say some fuck shit, be ready to get a response. Don't go blocking the motherfuckers or get mad and call out age. Like, who does that? Every time there's an issue with anybody that I have, whether it be on social media, I've noticed this in the past year. Every time I have an issue with somebody that come for me first and I say something back, they always got to say, oh, well, you in your 40s or ain't you too old, you old bitch. Like, y'all motherfuckers stay calling me an old bitch, an old, I'm old, I'm old. 40 is not motherfucking old, all right? I'm not motherfucking old. And there's a lot of you motherfuckers that call me old, like this fucking fat troll bitch and the other one who call me old. But y'all bitches is like half my age and wish you looked like you didn't look my age, okay? I'm happy that I don't look fucking 40. And I'm pretty sure I'm not the only fucking black female out there or any fucking female out there that's in their 40s and don't look it. So, and so what? You hope and wish that you look like that when you get to my age. Bitch, you hope you even get to my motherfucking age, okay? So, on that note, we're going to get into this real talk, okay? Because I done wasted enough time with Billy Goat's Gruff's Trolls and Shrek and Fiona's daughter, okay? Like I said to that bitches, go back under that bridge where you're supposed to be, where the rest of your kind is. Shoo, shoo, shoo. Dust your, sh um, dust your shoulder off and shoes troll away. Okay? Nah. Now, you guys know, if you want a real talk, you can definitely send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please make sure to put in the post the subject line, real talk. And also in the email, if you want to change your names or you change the names of the characters, please let me know. Because if you don't, I'm going to assume that you did and I'm going to read it aloud. And then you might get mad with me and be like, oh, no, she didn't. And then I'm going to be like, oh, yes, the fuck I did. Okay. So, on that note... Let's get into this real talk, okay? Hmm. 
All right, girls. Hey, Miss April. My name is Chelsea. You can go ahead and use my real name. I don't mind. First off, I just want to say that I love your videos and you're so beautiful and hilarious. It makes my day watching your videos. Now, on to my issues. And, girl, I have a lot of them. I am currently a 19 year old college student who lives with my parents, and I'm honestly so miserable. To start off, I struggle with depression which makes almost every day a living hell. I have had many thoughts of suicide, but have never gone through with them. I have expressed to my parents on numerous occasions how I was feeling, and all they ever do is shrug me off and act like it isn't a big deal, which hurts my feelings and makes me feel horrible. On top of that, I hate school. If I had the choice whether or not to go to college, I would have never gone, and I know if I drop out, my parents would kick me out. I have also expressed my issues with school to my parents, and all they say is, you're so fucking lazy. You're going to be homeless and end up being a prostitute. And that makes me feel like complete shit. I understand that I would have to work 10 times harder to get where I want to be in life if I don't have a college degree. But I am prepared for doing that. I believe college isn't for everyone and that's okay because there are so many people in the world who are successful and have never gone to college. And I believe in myself that I could be one of them. To sum it up, my parents are the most unsupportive, judgmental people. I know, I know and I am fed the fuck up. Oh, excuse me. My parents are the most unsupportive, judgmental people that I know. And I am fed the fuck up. Recently, I have been having thoughts about trying to find a roommate situation and dropping out of college once the semester is over. But I wanted to get your opinion on it first. If you could help me out, that would be a blessing. Thank you so much, Chelsea. So first of all, excuse me because Tinky's in here with me because my daughter's at work. So, hold on. I tried to get this done early, but I couldn't. All right, you guys, so you seen Chelsea, oh, you, you didn't see her, but you heard her dilemma. She's 19, year old. She's 19 years old. She goes to school. She lives at home with her parents. She feels depressed a lot. She's been feeling suicidal. Her parents just put her down. They call her all kind of names like you're fucking lazy. You're going to be a prostitute if you drop out of school. She doesn't feel like she wants to be in college right now. She just feels like it's not for everyone. They're just judgmental. They don't listen to her. Basically, it seems like she doesn't have anyone to talk to. She doesn't have any one but herself and she just rather just drop out she does know that if she drops out she does have to work 10 times harder just to be somewhere in life and, and that's what she's prepared for she just wants to drop out after the semester is over and find a roommate and just you know find herself in life and she she wants my opinion so you like I said this is opinion I'm not telling you to jump out the fucking window and jump out the window you do what you feel is best but however she does have a point College is not for everyone. I'm not condoning people to not go to school, um, but college is not for every single person. You know what I'm saying? I have known a lot of people in my lifetime that are very successful that never had a college degree like my dad. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's not for everybody. And, and you know what I'm saying? Yeah, true indeed. We have to go to school like, you know, to elementary, to middle school, to high school. Those are what we're supposed to do. That is standard. That is I guess the law, you know what I'm saying? That is what is expected of us. We have to get an education. However, when you have gone to school so long, so many years in your life, excuse me guys, when you have been in school for so long and so many years in your life, I think like after a while, it just becomes like a chore to some people. Some people just are tired of There's people that don't want to go to school when they have to go to school, when they're in high school and they drop out, which sucks because at least finish high school, you know what I'm saying? That way you do have a high school diploma or even a GED, but at least finish those standard schools that are expected of us and that you need in life. This contact is killing me, or not even killing me, but feels weird. Um, I just feel like, you know what I'm saying? A lot of times as parents, we are really hard on our kids. And I'll be the first to admit that, like, that's better. Um, I'll be the first to admit that, like, with my son and my daughter, like, I expect them to go to school and finish their education. But, you know what? Just like she said, college is not for everyone. And I have said some pretty mean things as well, like, oh, what you want to be? And flipping burgers. Like, so, you know what I'm saying? And then I had to catch myself. Sometimes as parents, we don't really see ourselves as being, we see ourselves as being supportive, but we're really not. You know what I'm saying? I don't really think, like, it's 
a good idea to bash somebody for how they feel about certain things. That's not what you're supposed to do, especially as a parent, but definitely as a person. You know what I'm saying? When someone comes to you and wants to talk to you about something, basically like she went to her parents and she spoke to them about how she feels about school, that's how she feels. She's entitled to feel how she feels. We're all entitled to feel how we feel. However, if someone comes to you and is like, listen, I don't like school. I, I don't think it's for me. I just want to not go right now. Oh, you're fucking lazy. You're going to be a prostitute and homeless. That's not what you're supposed to say to somebody because that fucks them up mentally. And then sometimes when you fuck up a person and you say things like that mentally, you fail to realize, but that those little bit of words can fuck with somebody's life. That can scar them for a while. You understand what I'm saying? So, like, as parents, sometimes we say things that are really not necessary. You know, like, we don't seem so supportive. We say things that are a little bit too harsh and a little bit too mean. And I get it because I've been there and I've done that and I've said that as well as I have my own mother who has said some pretty mean things to me in life and I'm pretty sure you guys have remembered this because I have shared this with you guys on, on many different occasions to where me and my mom you know I wouldn't speak to her at times but you know our relationship has changed but nobody is perfect but I tell you what Sometimes we have to take a break from shit because we do what is expected of us all the time And then when we get to when we're adults and it's time for us to be on our own It's so hard. I feel like you know um, Sometimes going from Kindergarten to graduate from 12th grade. That is a very long journey in life whether you guys think it or not It's a long journey and I just feel like some people are just not ready to go right straight to college after they graduate from high school I think that a lot of times some people need to take breaks and find themselves take time off It may be a year. It may be a year or two. It may be a year two three or four Regardless of what you need to take time for yourselves and don't feel pressure doing something because if you feel pressure And you feel like you're being forced to do something it's not going to be an, an enjoyable task you understand me meaning she don't want to go to school right now she don't feel like this is what she wants to do but she's only doing this because of her parents and she feels like they'll put her out they've already went off and told her she's a bum basically if she doesn't finish school she's gonna be homeless and she's gonna be a prostitute so because you go to college you're not gonna be a prostitute you're not gonna be a homeless person you're just gonna be this fucking genius who just succeeds in life let me tell you something I have known many people that have went to college and they don't do anything but be a motherfucking bum on their parents couch or better yet they flip burgers which is nothing wrong with flipping burgers or they work some minimum wage jobs so just because you go to school don't mean that you're going to succeed in life you understand what I'm saying a lot of times when these kids go to school right after college some, I mean after high school some of them are forced and some of them aren't but I just feel like if you feel pressured then maybe it's time for you to take a break and find yourself Finding yourself is a lot of different are on, 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 on. Finding yourself is on a whole bunch of different levels. You understand what I'm saying? You go through shit. You try something out and it's not for you. You try something out and it's not for you. You go through shit. You have to figure out who the fuck you are. Because all these years that you can remember, you have been what your parents expect you the fuck to be. And I get it. We all try to be what our parents expect us to be in life like I'm not saying I'm the best person I didn't go to college I didn't even finish high school but then I later on got my GD because my husband instilled that in me and at least he gave me that much finish school at least not go to college but at least finish those standard schools and I did that even though I was already had a successful career I stopped and I did that you know sometimes she's right sometimes you do have to work t 10 times as harder to get to where you are in life if you don't go to school sometimes the fuck you don't all right it all depends sometimes on who the fuck you know or where you've been looking at or what the fuck you can do and what skills you got so I wouldn't say that sometimes you got to work 10 times harder because you don't got a college degree that's not true sometimes when you have a college degree you got to work 10 times harder because they expect you to do this and they expect you to be like that that way let me tell you something I get it I'm not I'm not going to say quit school this year or quit school next year but what I am gonna tell you to do Chelsea is find yourself and don't feel so pressured let me tell you feeling pressured and feeling forced is the worst thing in the world because you feel like you caught in the between and you just can't get out you feel like you're a prisoner okay and you probably feel like that now in your home because 
your parents treat you as if you didn't matter they don't listen to your opinions they don't care about how you feel and then when you do express yourself they're putting you down me personally I'm the type of person where listen like I told my son Wuzzle he don't want to go to college he said that's not for everybody and he said the same fucking thing and here I was you need to go to school you need to go to school but then you know what I said my mom and them may not have been so supportive to me as a child or as a person growing up or as a young adult but I'm gonna be I'm going to support my kids like I said if you want to be a burger flipper and that's the career that you want then I'm gonna support it because you never know what person what a person wants to do in life a lot of people put down jobs that they flip burgers or they make french fries or whatever some people put that down but hello that is some people's career the person that started that was what they wanted to be in life and they became rich off that shit you can't knock somebody for what they want to do in life some people like to do that and you cannot knock anybody's happiness if that's what you want to be in life and that's what you want to fucking do then you have to support the person if you want to be a motherfucking stripper then bitch twerk that ass and get that money if you want to be a motherfucking prostitute bitch give the best fucking head you can give and get that motherfucking money not saying I would support <laughs> listen I'm not saying go out and do that but what I'm saying is people have a choice in life and it depends on what they want to do let me tell you I ain't about to never knock anybody for what they choose to do as a career in life because to each his own you can't knock me for what the fuck I like to do so why and who the fuck am I to tell you oh bitch you can't be fucking selling pussy on the corner you need to go ahead and be a professor let me tell you something those are two different things okay what's good for the goose ain't good for the gander I'm gonna tell you this much though Chelsea don't let that shit stress you the fuck out and don't feel like you under the fucking ball and chain if you feel like this is not for you then you know what sometimes you gotta spread your wings and do what you feel is best for Chelsea. And I'm pretty sure that if you're smart enough, you're going to figure it the fuck out. And if you feel like you need to find a roommate so you can breathe, because I'm pretty sure once you drop out, they're either going to put you out like you said because you know best, you know more than I do, or they're going to just really downplay you in your home. And I'm pretty sure you wouldn't want to deal with that either. So I'm pretty sure that if you decide to find a roommate, Make sure that it's a safe environment. Make sure that the person that you choose to be your roommate is someone that you know. Understand me? Not someone like in a fucking newspaper on Craigslist or Offer Up or wherever. And you decided to room with them because those motherfuckers might be some crazy ass motherfuckers. Try to find someone that you're very familiar with and know. So that way you don't have no issues and you don't have no more needed stress. You understand me? Like I get it. I totally get it. Life is a fucking ladder. Bitches, y'all got to climb that shit so hard. You feel like you at the top and that shit just keeps extending and extending. But one thing I will say this is don't let anybody make you miserable in life, okay? Because your life is short span, meaning that shit is not long. Y'all may think living till maybe 100 or whatever age is long, but nah, that shit goes by just like that in a heartbeat. And before you know it, you sitting there like, damn, I should have took that break. Now I have this fucking job that I hate. Or, damn, I should have did this. Everybody needs a break sometimes. And we all got to find themselves. What the fuck y'all think I came over here for? I moved all the way to the West Coast from the East Coast. Because I needed a break. I needed time to fucking cool off from my life and from my marriage with my husband. And just breathe, okay? And figure out what the fuck it is that April is. Who April is. What April needs. And what she wants. And then when I finally figured it out, yeah, it might have took me some time. I was ready. Like, I've been ready to be who April is, and I've been ready to be with a certain person, my husband. But sometimes we need to breathe, and we got to take that break and that chill and find ourselves. And just to find ourselves and get away from all the negativity. So, Chelsea, listen to what I'm saying, okay? You get it, and you'll do it. Whatever makes you happy, you got to do can't always please every fucking body. That's all I'm saying. Not on to the So next. when I chose this one, well, I chose it because, you know, I go in order. But it was just so weird because Chelsea's was kind of like over. It wasn't really overlooked. It was a little bit older than this one. I think it was like the beginning, the very beginning of the month. But either way, um, it's just like kind of like the same story. And this email reminds me of this um, family. I don't remember if they were... Um, 
Pakistan or Afghanistan. I know they were Muslim family, and I remember watching it on one of those investigation discovery channels, you know, that I like to watch. And basically, they were a Muslim family. It was um, two daughters and a mother and father. And this is a true story. And I do believe they made a movie into it, but they made it into like, you know, a 30 minute or an hour show on investigation discovery because the man was wanted. And I can't remember the ending. I think he went to jail, whatever. But anyway, so you know, like a lot of religions, people, they want their daughters, they want to marry their daughters off to whomever, you know what I'm saying? And so like with this Muslim family, um, in this show, there were two daughters and the father was just so hard on the daughter, the one daughter. And the, um, I think the mother and the daughters, the mother and the two daughters ran away. I think they ran away, something like that. Um, but the father, basically the father ended up killing the daughters. You know what? Let me find out what it is before I continue on. Okay, so what it's called is an honor killing, okay? And what's so sad about it, when I looked it up on Google, there was something kind of very similar to this back in 2017 of July. A Christian father actually killed his teenage daughter, stabbed her repeatedly for dating a Muslim guy. He killed, so this is just like ridiculous, but this is called an honor killing is what they call it. Um, and it's a Muslim teenage girl murdered in an honor killing was the victim of a clash of cultures, police said. Um, strict Kurdish Muslim, he killed his, basically he cut the throat of his 16 year old daughter um, because he believed she had become too westernized, you know, Americanized. He was jailed for life, so he's still alive. So it's called an honor killing, and I mean, you guys can look it up. It's 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 nothing new to society, but what's so bad about it is it's sad that families are just, families and religions in general just cannot accept the fact that this is the new era, this is a new age. You can never freaking judge somebody on their religion. I just said this in the beginning. A lot of people use their religion just to mask their demonic ways and who the fuck they really are. And it's just sad that parents want their children to marry who the fuck they want them to marry. Like, you can't do shit like that. And I know that's some people's cultures and shit like that, but I just think that it's sad and it's pathetic that you will force your child, your daughter, into marrying some fucking man that she don't even know of. Like, I just think that that's a horrible way of living. But anyway, so this is this email reminded me a lot of that story that I had seen. Um, but now that I know there's another one out there, it's just like, what is wrong with society? But anyway, so here we go. Hey, April, I love you so much. I have been watching you ever since your first channel, which means I was literally 11 to 12 years old at the time and have recently rediscovered you. I've pretty much grown up with your influence and videos in my life, and I'm so sorry for the length of this email, but I think this will be unlike any real talk you have ever had before. All names have been changed. You can call me Ven. I am 19 years old. Here goes, it's another 19 year old. And come from a Middle Eastern Muslim household. I was born and raised in Utah, but I have really strict parents. Growing up was really rough for me because my entire life I have been living in the shell of a girl that my parents want me to be. Everything I do, everything I want to pursue, every decision I want to make, and especially anything I want to wear is severely criticized. My parents forced me to wear the headscarf when I was 12 years old and entering middle school. Deep down, I knew I didn't want this life, but I never questioned it because I wanted to respect and please my parents. Hey. Have a seat. Thank you. In recent years, I have grown into a woman and I have thought more and more about what type of life I want to live. It has gotten to a point where whenever I leave the house, I am completely a different person than when I am home and I'm basically living a double life. What I mean by this is in public, I wear what I want. I take off my headscarf. I hang out with boys and I go on dates and all the normal stuff that someone my age should be able to do. But if my parents knew, they would kill me. It's really stressful and gives me anxiety knowing any second a family member can see me in public and rat me out. All I ever wanted was the freedom to live my life the way I want to live my life without being forced to wear the scarf or yelled at for my choice of clothing literally every time I tried to leave the house. 
It's absolutely no way for a young girl to live being torn down and ridiculed constantly. It's funny, growing up watching your videos, I remember thinking, wow, April is so good to her children and a broken and lonely uninvolved fiend at the time, Bean at the time wanted you to be my mom so bad. It is humiliating being a grown ass woman and having your mom embarrass you in front of family and loved ones, telling me to adjust my scarf or pull down my shirt or cover my chest more. I have never been so ashamed than when I am in these moments. Wow, hold on guys. You might be wondering why don't I just move out considering I'm a grown college student who has the freedom to do so. In my culture or at least my community of Kurdish, Kurdish people specifically it is highly inappropriate for a young girl to move out at all unless she is getting married and if you do you get disowned by your family and everyone will talk shit about you I want to move out so bad but can't do it anywhere near Utah because my family will find me and most likely hurt me however Things have been getting real claustrophobic in my life and I just can't handle it anymore. Me and my cousin slash best friend Susie, who is 21, have made plans to run away together soon to a faraway state where our families won't be able to find us. It's going to be really hard starting a new life and essentially starting over and having no family or friends except for one another. And although I know I need to go in order to be happy, I finally start and finally start living my life in freedom. It still hurts because regardless of the resentment I hold against my parents, I will still always love them and my family dearly. And the thought of being disowned and never seeing them again makes me sad. If I stay in Utah, I will forever be living a double life to please my parents, but living in fear of being caught and also constantly being depressed that I can't control, that I can't truly be myself. If I run away with my cousin, I will finally be happy and feel free, able to pursue whatever I want in life without being scared, but I will forever be a disappointment to my family who won't have contact with me. I would love to hear your take on my situation and get your advice on my decision to run away. You know something? This is what I'm talking about. This is like almost like the last girl, but different situation. This situation is totally different. And I feel so horrible for her because I know, like, I don't honestly know how she feels. But from seeing it on TV and stuff, I can, I can imagine how she can feel. You know what I'm saying? Like growing up in a household like that. And it's not just Muslim people that do stuff like that. It's Christians. It's Jehovah Witnesses. You know what I'm saying? It's um, it's Asian people. There are a lot of cultures that believe like you can not marry anybody unless it's our own kind. You cannot move out unless you're ready to get married. So it's like you stick me with somebody that I don't even know and then you expect me to marry this person and be fucking happy. Meanwhile, there's a lot of these cultures who marry their children off, you know what I'm saying, to men that they don't even know. And these men beat these women and rape them and treat them like shit. You know what I'm saying? And it sucks. Like, I understand everybody has their religion. Everybody has their preference. Everybody has their beliefs. However, when you get to a certain age, it's unfortunate. But we're grown. And we need to decide who we want to be. Just because that's what you believe in, mom and dad, does not necessarily mean that I have to. And I mean, like, listen, she's grown. You know what I'm saying? She's a grown woman. She's 19 years old. Her and her cousin... They believe they both are miserable. And that sucks that she got to live a double fucking life just to be happy. I'm sorry, but if it were me and I was that age, I'd, I'd leave too. I would honestly fucking leave too. Honestly. I'm not about to live in nobody's house. Could you imagine living somewhere and you can't do anything? Living somewhere and being forced to marry somebody you don't know? Like, that alone right there would make me fucking run away. Fuck the part where I gotta wear the, the scarf on my head and dress a certain way. Maybe I might be okay with that, but I would not be the fuck okay with being married the fuck off. That's one thing I'm not about to be okay with. You can't, you can't dictate love. You can't make a person love a person because that's what the fuck you want. Or because they got more money, this is where my child needs to be. Hell to the fucking no. Let me tell you something. I've seen a lot of families, um, my daughter's friend, she have, um, her mom don't do this to her no more because I've noticed she's getting out more. But her mom would make her, like, force her to do cheer and force her to do other kind of things. Like, and the girl would be so fucking miserable. Like, so miserable. And I would say to my daughter, you know what? When she get older, 
That little bitch going to take the fuck off. She's going to be uncontrollable. Like, seriously, she's going to be uncontrollable. And that's what the fuck happens. And I'm not saying that Bean is being uncontrollable, but she's very unhappy. And it sucks that you have to sneak out and carry extra clothing with you just because that's what you want to do in life. And this is what you want to be. Now, I don't condone anybody running the fuck away. However, she grown. She 19 years old. She, this is not running away. She's not really running away when you guys think about it. At the age of 19, about to be 20 years old, you're not running away, sweetheart. You about to go and find yourself, okay? Find your motherfucking self. Listen, life is short, okay? Life is very short. And you may feel like your mother and father or your family is going to disown you. That might just be how you really feel. And that might just be what they really will say. And that might just be what they will do. However, what you going to do? You going to live your life in fear and being sneaky and living a double life all your life just to please them and be miserable and depressed? Or are you going to go and leave and make Vin happy and live a life and, and find happiness and true love and just happiness in general? Let me say something to you. It's not fucking running away. Utah is a small motherfucking state. And I get it. You won't, You and your cousin are going to run away together or leave. Let's call it leave because that's what the fuck y'all doing. Y'all leaving. Y'all grown. Y'all growing up and y'all are leaving. Not running away. Y'all going to leave and be together and find yourselves and journey on in life. You never know what could become of you two. You know what I'm saying? You could be more successful than your parents could ever imagine. And sometimes we have to do what's best for us. Sometimes we have to do what makes us happy. Trust me, my mom wasn't, like when me and my husband had our huge last altercation before I, I moved here, my mom was like, well, if you ever get back with him, I'll never speak to you again. Oh, I'm so mad with the sun that keeps freaking coming. Like, ugh. It was getting like really dark, he had to adjust the settings. Um, like I was saying, my mom was like, if you ever get back with him, I'm never going to speak to you again in life. And I just, like, really felt like, dang, did she, like, really fucking mean that shit? Like, you know what I'm saying? And then I was like, well, I'm just, I guess I'm not going to be with him anymore because I wouldn't want to lose my mom. This is how I was feeling for, like, the longest, you know what I'm saying? Look, I done changed the whole setting up real quick. I just with one click. Okay, so, you know, I'm like, oh, okay, well, that's my mom. I'm not about to, like lose my mom for for my husband uh, for you know what I'm saying but then I had started feeling like you know whoa I, I care about this man I love this man can't nobody stop me from being with him like yeah we went through some real fuck shit and the shit was dead ass wrong the shit that our last altercation but this who I love and this who love me like man I guess if she don't fucking speak to me no more then I guess she don't fucking speak to me no more cause what the fuck am I supposed to do about it you know what I'm saying like this who I love this who I wanna be with you can't help who the fuck you love but you know what's so crazy about it she loved him so much she was so happy that we was back together she, she didn't believe it at first she was like did you really get divorced from him and I'm like yeah and you guys are back together. She was so happy, like tickle pink. So, you know what I'm saying? They say things that may hurt us. And sometimes they say things out of anger. And they also say things to protect us. And sometimes it could be more harmful than you can only imagine. However, I still went about my BI, my business, okay? And, oh, this is pissing me off. Okay, so that interruption was actually the DHL delivery person delivering me a package. So, as I was saying... Um, I don't even remember. Oh, you know, I had to say, you know what? I'm not going to listen to my mom. Not that I don't listen to her. However, I'm, this is my life. I'm grown and this is my life and this is who I love. And regardless of who's going to judge me or who's going to say some fuck shit, it is what the fuck it is. Okay. You either going to like it or leave it the fuck However, alone. the situation still is a little bit different from Veen's situation. I just feel like this. In my heart of hearts, and from what she's explained to me, and from what I know about all of this, you know, in general, and just from cultures in general, I just think that it's sad that someone has to be forced into 
dress in a certain way, are forced into marrying who they're supposed to marry, are forced into, you know, believing or just doing or taking a profession that their parents want. I just think that that's kind of like to me like slavery. That's just my opinion, okay? And everybody's entitled to their opinion. But in my opinion, I'm going to say this, Bean. It's not running away, sweetheart. You grown. It's called leaving. And you may be a disappointment right now to your parents, okay? But trust and believe. They still gonna love you. And they still gonna think of you. And they're probably gonna worry more so about you. But you have to do what's best for you. And you cannot disappoint yourself, okay? That's the number one key in life. We have to do what's best for us. We can't always do what everybody wants us the fuck to do all the time. We got to do what's good for us. What's good for the goose may not be good for the motherfucking gander. What's good for your parents may not just be good for you. You know what I'm saying? You have to do what makes you happy. And your cousin, she has to do Susie. She has to do what makes her happy. It's the both of y'all that's miserable. And I guarantee you, it's not just them two that's miserable. There are many other Muslim young ladies in this world, in this society, that feel the same way and are going through that same shit right now as y'all are watching this shit, okay? And it may not even just be Muslims. It can be Asians. It can be Christians. It can be Jehovah Witnesses. It can be Africans. These cultures, there are a lot of cultures that do this, you know what I'm saying? And I know that Jehovah Witnesses do it. I'm not bashing Jehovah Witnesses, but they prefer them to marry Jehovah Witnesses, and that's what it is but i do say this we're brought up to believe one thing we're brought up to embark in one thing we're brought up to do certain things and to believe and, and to listen to our parents and respect our parents and we do that but sometimes being a parent we don't respect our children we don't respect what they feel we don't respect what they believe in we always sometimes feel like we know everything and when they get to a certain age they're grown and they're entitled to have an opinion everybody's entitled to have a fucking opinion everybody's entitled to feel how they fucking want to feel in life i'm just saying we're all entitled to that you know what I'm saying and me I was raised in a Baptist church all my life made to go every Sunday to church and be on the junior ushers and be on the choir and, and all of this stuff and, and you know what's so crazy about it that's not what I was christened as as a child I'm not even christened as a Baptist I'm christened as a Methodist so I'm, I was going to this church that wasn't even my church my entire life because this is something that my grandfather expected of me to do I didn't even want to be there, okay? I did not even want to be there. I dreaded going from 11 o'clock, or was it like 10.30 to 3.30, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Who the heck wants to sit there for that long? You know what I'm saying? And then as I got older, I finally stopped going because that's not what I believe in. I believe in that to an extent, but not believe in it to an extent. You know what I'm saying? What you guys pray to is not what I pray to. And that goes with a lot of people. So, you know what I'm saying? My belief is I just feel, it's, it's, this is not even a topic for it, but I felt forced and I felt like, you know, this is what is expected to me. My mom expected, to me, expected me to grow up, be a lawyer, and marry another lawyer. This is what my mom expected of me. I did not do that, okay? I had five kids and I grew the fuck up and I did all types of different careers until I found one that was suitable for me and I became what the fuck I wanted to be. Yeah, may and dropped out of school. Maybe I was a disappointment to her. I'm pretty sure I was along with my dad being a disappointment to him too. However, they got over it. I got over that hurdle. I had to work a little bit harder, but I got to where I needed to be in life and here I am today. So, we can't always do and be what our parents want us to be. You know what I'm saying? We have to do what makes us happy. I don't expect all of my kids to do what the fuck I want them to do. I, hey, I can't tell my kids to go out and be a fireman, and be a nurse, and be a doctor, be a lawyer, and be a judge. I can't tell them that. Because what if one of them doesn't want to do that? What if the one wants to be a rapper? That's a rapper now. What if the one wants to be a fashion designer that designs his own clothesline now? So, you know what I'm saying? Who am I to tell them what the fuck I want them to do? Yeah, we always want the best for our kids. That's great and dandy. And sometimes our best can be and may destroy them. So I think like as parents, we have to sometimes think, hey, I was in their shoes at one time. Hey, let me stop and smell the motherfucking roses because the grass ain't always greener on the other side. Then you need to do what makes you happy, okay? Stop calling it running away, honey. 
because it's not it's leaving and finding yourself and I can feel you and I understand where you're coming from and I would never expect anybody to sit somewhere and be somewhere where they were totally miserable and feel like it's the end of the world you know what I'm saying and have to live a double life you ain't no motherfucking double agent bitch find your happiness you and your cousin Susie and I wish you both the very best I don't really know about too much about Utah because you know I don't really hear too much about it but hey Arizona is a nice fucking place to be, honey. A nice place. It's cheap. There's a lot of people. You might blend in with the Hispanics, so nobody would ever even know that you was Middle Eastern, okay? You may run into me, okay? You find a job, you'll like it. It's nice out here. Think about it. But I'm pretty sure you've already thought about it and you've made your mind up. So when you guys are ready to leave, make sure that you are prepared. Meaning, you got your things together, you got money, you, you ready, you know what I'm saying? And stand firm and stand strong because once you go, don't turn back. Never turn back. Continue on your journey, okay? So on that note, let's get on to the next one. So this one is not about parenting, but it's about a relationship. Hey, April, hope you're doing well. The names have already been changed in this email. You can call me Malika, and you can call my boyfriend, Chris. Me and Chris have been together for almost three years. Everything was perfect in the beginning. We would go on dates every week. He would buy me flowers every week, and once in a while, surprise me with gifts. As well as on birthdays and anniversaries, he would always go all out. We had great communication and always listened to each other. Before anything, we were best friends, which I believe was the reason why our relationship was so successful. But April, the past six months, we have been arguing like crazy over the pettiest shit. Usually, he can handle my mood swings since we've been together for three years. He knows how I get when it's that time of the month. However, now he's acting like he can't understand me. When we get into an argument, we will have... he. <clears throat> When we get into an argument, he will have his days where he will just take a break from us without discussing it with me. He'll stop talking to me for a week, and I'd have to call and try to reconcile the both of us. But this time, April, he took a break without telling me again, and it's been two weeks. I get men need this space, but he's not communicating this um, this with me. For all I know, he could be done with the relationship, and I'm just sitting here waiting for him like a dummy. April, I love him and we are very serious, but I don't want to message him any first anymore. I don't want to message him first anymore. He needs to show me he's willing to make things work. Should I just move on or wait for him? Please help. So Malika basically been with Chris for three fucking years and um, seems like he they have been arguing over petty shit, but seems like Chris has been taking a break from her. So when Malika start acting up or just having little petty arguments, Chris asks me like, you know what, bitch, I'm gonna need my motherfucking space this time. I'm gonna need two weeks and more. She haven't heard from him in two fucking weeks. And normally when this happens, he'll communicate to her. Let me tell you something. I wish a mother. Now, let me tell you something. When you're in a relationship, yeah, sometimes you do need your space, but you don't go days without fucking talking to the person. That goes to say with anybody's relationship, who the fuck does that? I wish my husband would tell me I need my space and don't call me for two weeks. A bitch gonna get on the fucking plane and be popping up and knocking him upside his goddamn head, okay? That's not about to happen. You guys talk about, you guys, she said, um, Malika said they're serious. No, the fuck you're not serious. You might be serious, Malika, with the relationship, but Chris ass ain't. You didn't mention you never taking a break. You mentioned Chris ass always taking a break. My thing is this. Now, Chris, Chris been the one taking breaks, but you haven't. Seems like Chris be taking breaks from you because maybe he got some pussy or a piece on the side that he can go ahead with and not be aggravated with from time to time. Now, I'm, I'm sorry, but if we supposed to be in a relationship and we've been together for three years and nigga, I ain't spoke to you for two weeks. Now, listen, it ain't like you in a coma. You ain't locked the fuck up. You ain't on some deserted island. You ain't in training. You somewhere around the motherfucking corner or in my town, in my vicinity. And I ain't speak to you in two weeks. I wouldn't even give a fuck if your phone got cut the fuck off. You could still speak to me. There's ways of communication. But like I said, you ain't locked the fuck up. You ain't in basic training. You ain't on a deserted island. You ain't a hostage. You ain't in a motherfucking coma. I done gave you five things 
or reasons why, you know, these are the reasons, these are the excuses why I ain't spoke to you in two weeks, all right? Now, if you ain't none of those fucking things, then what's the fucking excuse? I get it. Everybody has fucking arguments in relationships. That's, that's to be said. I'm pretty sure every fucking person in their life who has been in a relationship, there has been something argued about, whether it's been petty or non-petty. We have disagreements, okay? Shit, I've had a lot of them with my husband. A whole fucking lot of them. But you know something? It is what the fuck it is. But we ain't never went two weeks without speaking to each other. Well, that was after I left, but you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. Um, well, yeah, sometimes he might have went two weeks without... No, because even when he was in jail, locked the fuck up, there's never been two weeks that he hasn't called me because he's going to have to call his wife and his kids and see how they're doing. But that's neither here nor there. Now she's talking about she don't want to be the first one to message him anymore. Sweetheart, how many times have you been messaging Chris to be the first one? She said, she, she said, I don't want to be the first one to message him anymore. So basically, Malika has messaged Chris on a numerous times and she's been the one to initiate it all the time. She just said she's the one who has to reconcile or reconcile everything for them. Let me tell you this much. You guys aren't serious. Like I said, you may be serious, but Chris isn't. He's immature. And if he can run away from a fucking problem and not want to speak to you for two weeks and then some or any amount of time, then he needs to grow the fuck up. Because if you're with somebody for three years, obviously you have some type of feelings for them and you love them. And that is not how you treat somebody that you fucking truly love, okay? The nigga ain't locked up. He ain't in a motherfucking coma. He ain't in a fucking deserted island. He ain't a motherfucking hostage. And he ain't in basic training. So there's no excuse as to why he didn't call you. He doesn't know if you're sick or not. And that's a fucked up thing to go through that he don't know if you're if you're ill or not. Like, I would feel some type of way if that were me and I didn't contact somebody for two weeks I would feel horrible and then if I didn't contact you for two weeks I would feel real embarrassed to even contact you after that and say hey babe what's up because then the other person on the other line is going to be like are you out your motherfucking rabbit ass mind I ain't spoke to your bitch ass in two weeks and you want to call me up now I would be embarrassed to call anybody after that lengthy time of not speaking to them like who the fuck does that and you talking about should you wait on him what dumb motherfucking ass is going to sit around and wait for some motherfucking man to show up at the door with flowers and candy or on a white fucking horse talking about, come on, bitch, I'm rescuing you and we going to the castle now because you my motherfucking queen. Bitch, no. Don't wait for his ass. This is what the fuck you do. Stop sitting the fuck around and moping over this nigga because as long as you continue to do that, he is going to allow you to be the one to initiate the fucking reconcilement, reenactment, whatever the fuck you want to call it of the relationship. Chris is a bitch because he's in his feelings and Chris might be a cheating ass bitch for all we know, okay? You're going to go two weeks without speaking to your girl. You don't wonder what the fuck she's doing or what's going on in her life. That's because Chris is selfish and he don't give a fuck about nobody but himself. I wouldn't even be sitting around. Let me tell you something. If that were me and my man didn't call me in two weeks, nigga, when you try to call me, you're not going to get through. Because you know why? Nigga, your number going to be blocked. Now I'm gonna throw the block line like them bitches done did to me. I'm gonna I'm gonna block you, and then I might just throw some deuces up on social media to you like deuces. I'm not about to fucking hear you and not fucking speak to you for two weeks, and you think you're gonna call me up? Shade, there be so much motherfucking shade dropped at your ass. You gonna be like, dang, bro, I should have called that bitch. Dang, I'm gonna block you. The only thing you're going to be able to do is come knocking on my door to try to explain yourself. And I might not still hear you the fuck out. Because knowing me, I would go off on a nigga. He'd be like, damn, I shouldn't even call you anymore, bitch. That's how I'm going to make you feel. Two weeks have gone by and this nigga has not called you. For all he know, you could be dead some fucking way or in a coma or locked the fuck up or in basic training. You know what I'm saying? He don't know this shit. That's because Chris don't fucking care. Some of y'all fail to realize just because it's been three years, three months, five years, whatever. You think a nigga really do give a fuck about y'all. And that's cool because sometimes they do. However, some of those niggas that you care so much about be selfish. And they be stringing you along for that fucking long. And be doing kitty bullshit like this. I'm going to tell you this much. And maybe you'll listen. Maybe you won't. But Malika, life is short. 
And there's a whole lot of world out there for you to see, okay? A whole lot of world for you to see and venture off to and, and figure out and find yourself. Maybe you might just, while, while in the midst of finding you, Malika, you might find Mr. Right, not Chris and his corny ass. Everybody hate Chris. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't be waiting and I wouldn't be no sucker to sit around and continue waiting. However, this is what I wouldn't do also. So he ain't called you in two weeks. Sweetheart, let me tell you what. Don't post up no fucking messages on social media talking about, mm, don't throw no shade at him. I I, I did say that I, all the shade would be thrown. But you know what? I, I think I have every right to throw the shade being that that's my husband. We've been together for 19 years. Okay, my son is 19. Wuzzle is 19 years old. We've been together since Wuzzle was a baby. 19 years we've been together okay even though we weren't we were apart for for four of those years we still was together okay we still was motherfucking together ask him and he'll tell you oh no like he did last night on the phone to me oh i don't give a fuck if he was with somebody else when i call you gonna answer because i'm the special one and we still together and you my wife still so we still was the motherfucking together okay however i so i can throw all the shade i want but here's not here's what you're not gonna do, Malika. Move the fuck on. Move the fuck on. And when you do move on, don't be on social media throwing shade at his ass. Because sometimes when they see that we may act the fuck up like that, that just gives them incentive. And then that kind of like boosts their male ego. You know what I'm saying? Or even their female ego, whoever. That that kind of like heightens it up for them. Like, oh yeah, word. <laughs> Got her right where I want her. We don't never want to see them. They, we don't never want them to see us sweat. We never, never, okay? Never want do we want them to see us sweat. We don't never want them to see us out of character and acting up. I mean, like, like I, I, I could even admit to my dad and my husband were right. Like, man, you didn't even have to say nothing to them, to, to them trolls. You don't need to let them see you like that. And they were right. I'm, I might not have. However, sometimes I, a bitch want to make a motherfucking point, okay? Sometimes a bitch need to make a motherfucking point to let you know, bitch, I'm not the one, okay? But you can also let him know that you're not the one by ignoring his ass, and not accepting his calls, not responding, and not fucking initiating it. Bottom fucking line. I know I wouldn't. Look who's over here. He wants to um be part of the real talk, I guess. Because he's sitting there looking. Yes. What your Lola's right there? Use it. Go ahead and get on it. What is that? Let me see. Where did you get this from? Well, go on your Lola. Go ahead and sit down. My mom's almost finished. Okay. My mom's almost finished. So yeah, no waiting, Malika. Cheer up. Life is 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 got some really good things stored ahead for you. I would never waste my time waiting around for somebody. Because you'll be waiting around and here he is out in the streets having a good old time, enjoying life, probably hugged up with the next bitch while you sitting at home moping over him. Come on now. Let's get over that hurdle and move on. Okay? So on that note, I hope you guys have had a good real talk. I do apologize about all of the interruptions. No, the camera's here, honey. It's here. It's here. It's right there. Right there. We hope you enjoyed this real talk. Stay diva and divalicious. Leave your comments below. Don't be on my page trolling. Tell them, say no trolling. Say say no trolls. Troll? Trolls. No trolls. Troll? Troll. Say no trolls. No trolls. No trolls. No trolls. No trolls. No trolls. Hashtag no trolls. Tell them. Hashtag no trolls. No trolls. No trolls. I don't have a pop, honey. We can go downstairs and see if we get some candy. You want some candy? All right. So we love you guys. Stay deep and delicious. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe. Thumbs this video up. Hashtag no trolls. Hashtag no trolls. No. No trolls. And on that note, we'll see you in a soon to come video. Bye. Bye. Say, right here. Right here. Bye. He's so Lala. Lala is over there. Lala is the Kindle. Get out. Bye, guys.